not long ago, a couple of days ago, in fact, I, was, I responded to a YouTube comment, YouTuber commenting when I was talking about narrow tires and skinny tires. And he, his comment was, why aren't you using wider tires? I thought it gave you a bigger footprint. Yes, it does. You're not wrong. It does give you a bigger footprint. Why do you want a bigger footprint? What advantage does a bigger footprint give over a narrow footprint? That's not the question to ask because sometimes a bigger footprint is a disadvantage. Do you want a big footprint or do you want a small footprint? Answer depends on the terrain entirely because at the end of the day, no matter what we do to our tires, at the end of the day, we want to control the rolling resistance. That's the bottom line. Rolling resistance, stickiness, traction. Those are the two things we're playing with, nothing else. Everything we do with the tire, those two are things are what we're, we're aiming for. Lowest rolling resistance, maximum traction. I hope you agree with that principle. Everything we do contributes or detracts from those two things. For example, let's say we're driving a vehicle with uh, wide-ish tires, let's say a 285-75-16. It's a 33-inch wheel, fairly big, by no means huge, pretty wide. It's kind of a wide-ish tire. And let's compare that with, say, a similar tire, 2855, 85 profile. In other words, it's taller, um, but it's narrower. So it's a similar amount of rubber. And one is like this, and one is like this. Okay. What are the differences between those two tires in terms of rolling resistance, traction? Okay. On a soft surface. Now, when I'm talking about a soft surface here, I've actually got to be, I've got to distinguish what kind of soft surface. Because snow behaves utterly differently to sand, which behaves utterly different to soft mud. These three things are not the same at all. And in fact, they themselves behave differently. Sand on a very, very hot, dry day is going to behave very differently from that same sandy patch on a cool morning where there's dew on the ground. Okay. Behaviors change with temperatures and humidity and all of those things. But let's simplify it by just saying sand. A lot of us, we've driven in thick, thick sand. Do we want to float in sand? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Why? Because, well, once we start sticking, sticking in sand, the vehicle, the, the tire actually starts compressing and then starts sinking into the sand. And as it sinks into the sand, it pushes the sand in front of it. So now it's driving against a wall. Do you agree with that? So every time as a tire is rotating, it's actually pushing a, a row, a line of sand flat in front of it. And it's crushing the sand as it rolls over. It's crushing the sand. If you can reduce the amount of sand it's crushing, you're reducing its rolling resistance because it takes a lot of energy to crush that sand. That's why when the tire is very, very hard, it sinks further and therefore the rolling resistance is higher to crush the sand in front of it, to push the sand in front of it. So what you want the, the tire to do is to sit on the top so it's got less sand to push. This is logical. With a wide tire, you've got this much sand to push in front of the vehicle, and with a narrow tire, you've only got this much sand to push in front of the vehicle, so it's easier. But because the tire is wider, it'll sink down less because it's a bigger, it's a wider footprint. Not so. Yes, so you get a wider footprint, therefore it doesn't sink in as much, but you've still got a lot of sand to push in front of it because you've got that width. Remember when a tire, when you let the tire pressure down, it does not make the tire wider at all. It doesn't make the tire wider. I've seen it, I still see it so often. How much is the tire bulging? What's it got to do with it? It's got to do with the tire's performance in terms of the way it looks, in terms of all of the things we've spoken to before, but not in terms of flotation and rolling resistance. Nada, nothing, zero, nothing. A tire does not get wider 
when, it get, when you let the tire pressure down. The tread that is in touch with the Mother Earth becomes longer. That's where, so it reduces penetration, it keeps the tire riding over the top of the sand as opposed to in the sand, reducing rolling resistance and allowing the car to travel over. It's as simple as that. So in sand, white tire is not better in sand than a narrow tire when it comes to rolling resistance. I have, I have proved it again and 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 Martians would have to come down and tell me otherwise. They make no difference at all. Wide tires do not help in sand. In fact, they're a bit of a hindrance because what I have noticed is that the, the steer, when steering, a narrower tire tends to bite a little bit better when turning. The vehicle is more agile. The, it's, it's easier to control. On, you know when you're driving on the sand and you, you, you know, you're turning and twisting and you know like this and, and you've got other tracks and you're, you know, better directional stability, easier to steer, more directional stability and the same cannot tell the difference when it comes to rolling resistance and ability to float over sand. So my conclusion is narrow is better in the, actually at the end of the day, the final sum, sand, narrow is better. But I say narrow up to a point because a bicycle tire isn't very good in sand, is it? Y but now you're getting to the extreme. Now you start talking about, about, about profiles and all of the other, lots of other factors start coming into play when you go super narrow and when you go super wide. Okay, I'm talking about general tires on four wheel drive vehicles from the narrowish to the widish. Okay. Let's talk about rock climbs. Narrow tires better. I make this as a blanket statement and I welcome comments on this. Because this I, I'm still could be convinced otherwise, but sand, forget it, I'm 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 beyond that. With rocks, if you've got a narrower tire, you've got more penetration. You've got because now you're not looking for rolling resistance. You the rolling resistance factor is quite low because you're not sinking in. The rolling resistance now you you're, you're operating and you're also operating in and low pressures. Why are you operating a low pressure on rock? Say that's the rock. My tire is if it's very hard, it's going to grip like that, isn't it? But if my tire can flex, oh, isn't that grip going to be better? Because my tire is flexing. So that's, again, it's not flexing on the width, it's flexing on the length, like it does on sand. So it's flexing and curling around the, the rock and giving me better traction. Does a wide tire give me that advantage? No, it doesn't make the stone bit of difference. In fact, a narrow tire is going to curve just like a wide tire, but because there's more pounds per squinch, per <laughs> squinch pounds per square inch pressure on a narrower tire, because you're carrying that same amount of weight, on a wide tire, narrow tire, you're actually going to get better grip. You're going to get better bite. It's going to bite better. It's going to bite better over a narrower surface than a wide surface. The wide surface is so easy. You know what it's like on, on rocks? No grip. Oh, I haven't got any grip. Narrow the tire. Suddenly you've got grip. Why? Because you've got a higher pounds per square inch pressure on the smaller amount. So I'm not an expert rock driver, rock, rock climber. I'm not. So I'm not, I'm not, this is why I'm saying to you guys out there that have done it a million times more than I have for, you, for your opinions on this. I don't believe a wide tire is better. Logically, it's not. There may be some situations where it is and that I'm interested in hearing about. But if you're building a vehicle and you want to, I want to go, wide tire. I have seen with my own eyes rock claw crawlers of almost stock FJ make mincemeat out of another FJ with 35s were like this. He couldn't climb anything. He just sat and spun his wheels. This almost stock. He had some high profile, reasonably narrow tires on this FJ, almost stock FJ. It's like a mountain goat. My G-Wagon, my second G-Wagon was like a mountain goat. I had tires this wide on it. It was a fantastic climbing machine. 
So again, that's my, that's my take on it. So where are wide tyres better? Wide tyres are a bit better on the road, on the tarmac. Bit better grip on cornering, on the more air that's underneath the vehicle is going to contribute to comfort and ride. I think maybe also on gravel, the, the err towards a wider tyre for comfort on gravel, for grip on gravel. Not in a, I don't think it's a deal, it's not a big, it's not a big thing, but I think it's there. You know, um, I found with this, my Land Cruiser driving around, you know, traffic circles and, and, and things in town, that the wider tires were actually nicer to drive. They just grip better. But I noticed instantly I put the wire tires on that I had more steering force. I had to turn harder, logically. And more importantly, I had less steering feel. The, the actual feel back to the driver was better with the narrow tires. I could actually feel more of what was happening. It was a nicer feeling to drive. But then when I started pushing it and actually, you know, actually pushing the tires grip on tar, the wide tires were better. They were. They were. Where else is a wide tire better? Snow. Your argument might come up with now. Okay, what about snow? Snow. They use wide tires. No, nah, they don't use wide tires. Wide is relative. The width of the tire is relative to its height. So what they do in snow conditions, A, there are two types of snow conditions. A, one, you want to bite down, get through the snow, and get beneath the ice and break through the ice. Guess what tires the Scandiwegians use? They're not much thicker than my hat. They are extremely thin tires designed to break through, crack through the ice. Look at winter tyres that have studs and things, they're all narrow, designed to break through and grip. Flotation tyres on snow is a different story altogether and that's in a unique condition. Find in, also in Scandiwegian, up in the, the poles and those tyres, they look wide but actually they're, they're, they're tall. They're tall. The most important part about those tyres is that they are very tall and because they have an extremely high aspect ratio, in other words, they're a very tall tire as opposed to wide tire, you can let them down a lot. So it's another factor with tire design. If you're thinking about buying a vehicle for off-road use and you're thinking about tires and things like that, if your vehicle has more than the 17 inch, you're gonna start struggling a bit at about 18 inch, getting tires that are going to work well off-road. Once you're at 19 inch, it's pretty well hopeless. You're relying a lot on some of these vehicles like new Land Rover Discoveries and things like that have wonderful, very clever, brilliant, amazing actually, traction control systems. And in terms of pure performance and grip off-road, they are remarkable. Don't ask me to take one overland. I'm not interested in taking an 18 inch rim and having to drive it for weeks at a time at extremely low pressures on very, very soft sand. The tires just will not survive it. They won't. They're not designed for that purpose. So to me, the, optional, the optimal size is 16 inch and 17 inch is also quite, we proved it on this, on this um, uh, the KM3 launch. Uh, there was, these were stock vehicles and with a good tire on them and amazing, they, they performed amazingly. They did, they just, they, they were remarkable. And so it proved to me again, they all had 17 inches and it worked, they, they worked well. Above 17, you're starting to approach the difficult zone and by the time you get to 19, forget it. That is only my opinion and that might cause a little bit of a thing. That's my opinion. <clears throat> Where was I? Snow. The huge amount of air that they can let out now means that they can have this enormous footprint. And that's powder snow, virgin snow, pure flotation. It's, fl it's pure flotation. Again, what they're trying to do is reduce the rolling resist resistance because if they sink, the resistance goes up. So they're not using the, 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 the width of the tire for that. They're using the length 
and they're nice big tires. Now think of a tractor tire. A tractor tire needs to reduce its rolling resistance. How do they do that? They make them very, very big. But they need grip. They need monster grip. Monst That's why they've got the tread on those tires. So they've got to solve these two problems without reducing tire pressures. Because they can't reduce tire pressures because of the nature of the job the vehicle has got to do. First and foremost, it must be able to grip so it can pull a plow or whatever. So what do they do? Make the drive wheels enormous and make the steering wheels that are not, if they're not driven, you'll notice that any tractor with a they have very small and extremely narrow. Why narrow? Why aren't the front wheels of a tractor wide? Because wide don't steer. They need to dig in. They need to penetrate to steer the tractor in soft ground. It's further proof that a narrow tire steers better than a wider tire. Why does that just skips onto the surface? Imagine a tractor with great big wheel at the back and wide tires at the front. It would just, it would just do that. It would just carry on going straight. The, the back wheels would just push it straight. Narrow wheels that dig in and actually force the front of the vehicle around. So that very, very big wheel has that incredibly aggressive tread because grip is its number one priority. Let's have a look at these mud tires. Mud tires need grip. That's the whole point of them. They've got to penetrate through now, by penetrating through the mud, they're getting, to the, they're getting through the slush. And then below the slush, there's something to grip on. Because mud can be firm-ish, then it can be soft-ish, and then it can be just slush. 90% of the time in mud, you do not want to skip over the top of it. You want to actually get a wheel to dig down and grab the, what's underneath it and separate the, the slippery gunk on top. This is the highest percentage of mud driving. You actually want to dig in. You don't want a wide tire if you want to dig in. You do not want a wide tire if you want to dig in. I, I am I'm enjoying these tires very much, but I won't keep, I don't think I'm going to keep them in my Land Cruiser. They're too wide. The, for me, they're too wide. I want a 225.85. I'm enjoying the mud, the traction of these things. And I think that potentially these are going to be the class leader when it comes to rock climbing and this kind of thing and mud and, and you know, I believe that is, that's very possible. They're too wide for me. And, and I'm not a really advanced user in terms of, you know, I don't look for the most difficult climb and go and drive it. I don't. But I still think that those who do should opt for a more narrow, a narrower tire than these. It is true that these look very good. In fact, they look great. They look fantastic. But in my back of my mind, I keep looking at them thinking, I, I don't like them. They're too wide. They're too wide. They're just too wide. They're just too wide. I can't think of anything else more to say about tire pressures at this time, apart from the fact that there's so much to learn. And this, this whole point about this, this lovely thing we call four-wheel driving is that anybody who says, ah, oh, I've been doing it for years, well, things have changed, mate. Things have changed. Things are not the same as they were even 10 years ago. These new tires with new compounds, new, 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 new. Hey, learn, learn, learn. Experience, experience, experience. And uh, oh, I've been using tubed cross plies for years. Get into the 19th, no, well, I mean, that's been cruel. Get into the 21st, 20th century. No. These new tires are amazing. The fact that they can do so many things so well, so much better if we understand what they're doing, why they're doing it, and then be ready to muck about with the pressures, experiment, keep aware that low pressures can damage a tire, can cause a problem, and can even cause a, a blowout and an accident. You've got to be aware of that. So of all these off-road vehicles that we drive, probably the thing we have need to take care of the most of anything on these vehicles is probably the tires.